as the summer season draws to an end, you're probably going to find a lot of things are slowing down their growth in your garden. And that might be a good thing, especially if you've got loads of hedges. Right now is going to be the last time that you do your final pruning before the winter. And the next time you're going to touch them is going to be in spring. You can either use a manual pair of hedging shears or you can use a little battery powered gadget like I've got. Remember, with hedges, it's important that they are square from the top to the bottom. Don't be encouraged to prune deep in here because if you do that, then there's going to be no light there and the plant is going to battle to grow. So when you are pruning, make sure that you get a nice straight cut on it and don't go down in a V shape. So let's get pruning, do this now, a nice little clip and then leave it until spring. Just awesome show of summer and they have just been spectacular. However, at this time of the year, when the change of season occurs, there's a butterfly or a moth rather that's going to be cruising around your garden and it's going to lay some eggs on these little plants. They also go for your clivias and your amaryllis, commonly known as the amaryllis worm. And this is what it looks like. Take a close look here. If you find that all of a sudden your agapanthus leaves just start going a bit yellow and looking a bit manky, and I'm actually going to pull that guy out here. Take a close look. If you look in to the plant, do you see right in there? There, and look who's popping his head out. There is the caterpillar. That is the little guy that causes, oh, he's making a poo right here at my plant. Oh, now this stuff over here, do you see? That's all the manky stuff that you end up seeing. And a lot of people will phone or email me and say, Tanya, there's this goo coming out of my plants and I don't know what it is. Well, in fact, it all originates from, come on, baby, out you come from this oak over here. There he is. That's the culprit. This is the offender that causes all the damage and if you do not spray it and deal with it, this little guy goes right down into the core of the plant, right down into the bulb and destroys it. And in that way, you'll end up just with this implosion of mush and no agapanthus left. So, how do you get rid of him? Yeah, you know what I am gonna do, but I'm not gonna do that right now. Ways you can get rid of it is to go to your local garden center, ask for something called Margaret Roberts Biological Caterpillar Insecticide. You can use that. There are other products as well, which you can dilute into water and spray very safely over your agapanthus and your amaryllis and your clivias. And right now, I'm gonna do what I need to do. So if you're squeamish, don't look. And that's what we gotta do to get rid of amaryllis caterpillar on all of our agapanthus plants. The onset of autumn is a great time to lift pots, rejuvenate those pots that are looking a bit old and tired from the summer season and put something new and fresh in. Now, if you are going to be planting in a second-hand pot, in other words, a pot that you've had in your garden before, what's important is that you wash it out with a bit of a jig solution because if there were any diseases in here, it will kill them and get rid of them. So, very important thing to remember. And every time that you are looking at recycling any type of pot, whether it be a clay pot or whether it be a plastic pot. Next thing up, I'm going to show you a selection of great plants that you can use in areas where you do not get frost. Now don't as well think, oh I'm going to switch channel because I get frost. If you do get frost, then you need to put this pot that you're going to be planting into a courtyard or somewhere near a north facing wall so that it will be protected from the frost. So let's get to it. What have I got here? I've got an angelonia, a wonderful little short growing perennial. I've got a thyme, it's called silver posy, beautiful. Such a lovely smell. And I've got this little guy which is an impatience. Now, you're probably thinking about Tanya, this needs sun and that needs sun, but these don't like all that much sun. But here's the trick. This is an impatience, but it's called sun patience. These guys need the sun. So I'm going to put that lot together and then add one or two of my favorite plants in it. First things first is we need some gravel, some drainage chips at the bottom of the pot. Let's pop some in.
Always make sure that the hole in your pot is cleared because if you don't have a good drainage hole, then your plants are simply going to drown when you water them. All right, now that that's there, I've got a bucket of potting soil. What I'm going to be adding into the potting soil is a few handfuls of bone meal. Make sure that you turn it over nicely. Right. From there, empty at least half the bucket into the pot. Great stuff. Right, you'll notice that we filled the pot about three quarters of the way full. So first up, I'm going to use one of my main plants, and that's going to be the Sun Patience. Remember to take it out of pots, take the pot, squeeze it. And by doing that, when you turn it upside down, off comes the plastic pot, as simple as that. What you can do is tease away a few of the roots like that. That guy I'm going to be using as my backdrop. So that little guy's in place, I'm happy with that. These are in slightly smaller bags, so at this point I'm going to add in some more soil into my pot. Right, next up is my angelonia, and gently pull it off. There we go. And I'm going to pop this little baby just off. Aha, that's what I'm looking for. Righty, and then my thyme is going to go in right over here. Thyme Silver Posy is a wonderful, wonderful fragrance. It's a plant that doesn't only deserve to be in the veggie garden, folks. This plant deserves to be in your garden or in your pot. We're we just going to open it up a little bit like that. Take this baby and pop him right in this little gap over here. In goes that baby. Remember, time is cascading. Now that our three major plants are in, take your little hand trowel and once again start filling in. Here we go. Take the back of the hand trowel and you can firm it in. And last but not least, I picked a few of these little guys out of the garden, out of one of my pots. I'm going to take it, just pop it in here. And there you have it, one times beautiful autumn container. It's going to go throughout the winter for you, giving you beautiful colour. Remember, you can change this maybe with a salvia if it starts going off. You could then change it with maybe an echinacea, or you could even use some beautiful pansies just to fill it in during the winter months. And all in all, you've got a great combination here. Thank you.